The Duggar family is arguably one of the most compelling clans on reality television for a laundry list of reasons. But most of all, the TLC celebrities continue to hold viewers' attention because of their jaw-dropping size. Whether you like the family or not, there's no arguing that their 21-person family, 32 if you include the grandkids, produces an endless cycle of exciting storylines that keeps viewers coming back for more. Of course, this phenomenon applies to juicy confessions, too. Think about it. In soccer team-sized families, it's basically guaranteed that there will be no shortage of shocking admissions to go around. And in the Duggar family's case, they've dropped quite a few truth bombs throughout the years. Cheating Ways it's no secret that the Duggars love to wax poetic about the importance of faithfulness and honesty in marriage, and prior to a shocking moment in August 2015, Josh Duggar was one of the most outspoken proponents of commitment. If you don't believe us, consider the fact that Josh sang a tune about loyalty to his now-wife Anna Duggar on their wedding day in September 2008, including the line, I'll be there until the end with you. I'll do my best to be faithful and true. So it only makes sense that people were downright flabbergasted when in August 2015, Josh admitted to cheating on Anna via the notorious adultery website Ashley Madison. To add insult to injury, Josh carried out his dirty deeds while he was working at the Family Research Council, an organization dedicated to advancing faith, family, and freedom in public policy, according to its website. Hypocritical much? Josh touched on this hypocrisy in his statement on the matter, writing, according to the Duggar family's website, I have been the biggest hypocrite ever. While espousing faith and family values, I have secretly over the last several years been viewing pornography on the internet, and this became a secret addiction, and I became unfaithful to my wife. I humbly ask for your forgiveness. Please pray for my precious wife Anna and our family during this time. This is just another reminder that nothing is ever what it seems. And that wasn't the only shocking admission to come from Josh Duggar. History of Inappropriate Behavior one of the most shocking confessions in Duggar history is when Josh admitted to inappropriately touching his sisters when he was a preteen. Fans learned in May 2015 via police documents that Josh was investigated in 2006 for allegedly molesting five underage girls, including at least two of his sisters when he was just 14 years old. And shortly after the news broke, Josh gave a statement on the Duggar family's Facebook page. Twelve years ago, as a young teenager, I acted inexcusably for which I am extremely sorry and deeply regret. I hurt others, including my family and close friends. I confessed this to my parents, who took several steps to help me address the situation. The incidents reportedly took place in 2002 and 2003, and Josh said that after speaking to his parents, they went to the authorities together. He further wrote in his statement, we spoke with the authorities where I confessed my wrongdoing and my parents arranged for me and those affected by my actions to receive counseling. I would do anything to go back to those teen years and take different actions. Needless to say, many fans were stunned by his admission. Not only did it shatter the Duggars' squeaky clean image, but people also struggled to accept that Josh would hurt his own sisters in such a way. John David's Dismissal Shortly after Josh admitted to cheating on his wife and the world learned about him inappropriately touching his sisters, his brothers and sisters opened up about the betrayal in a December 2015 episode of Counting On. John David Duggar seemed to be the most disgusted by Josh's behavior. Appearing very solemn in the clip, John David said about his fractured relationship with Josh, I always wanted to be like him, but one of the toughest things I ever had to tell my, my older brother was, I, I don't want to be like you anymore. Essentially, John David felt compelled to diss Josh because he wants to set a good example for his younger siblings. Of course, there's a good chance John David didn't make this confession lightly. The Duggars never shade each other, and he probably knew his shocking declaration would generate headlines. Shots fired. Joy Anna struggled with her parents' faith. On the surface, Michelle and Jim Bob Duggar seem to have a lot of influence over their 19 children. From the Duggar brood's acceptance of Michelle and Jim Bob's strict dating policies to the fact that each child subscribes to their conservative religious views, it might appear that there's little dissent in the family. But before you congratulate Michelle and Jim Bob Duggar getting their kids to drink the Kool-Aid, let us fill you in and Joy Anna Duggar's shocking admission that she once grappled with her parents' faith. Yep, Joy Anna went there. While it isn't on the level of Josh's inappropriate behavior, it was nonetheless a shocking revelation. Making matters even more jaw-dropping is that Joy Anna revealed this info while toasting Joseph Duggar at his rehearsal dinner. According to Us Weekly, Joy Anna said, First of all, I want to say that, Joe, I'm so thankful for you. You really did change my life. Just through my teen years, I think I was having a hard time taking my parents' faith as my own, and you really befriended me as an older brother." Although Joy Anna didn't elaborate on her hard time, it's clear that whatever Joseph said to her did the trick. Not only is Joy Anna now married to Austin Forsyth, a very religious and conservative guy, but she also named her son Gideon, after a biblical figure. Cousin Amy was born out of wedlock 
If you followed 19 Kids and Counting from the jump, the name Amy Duggar King probably sounds familiar to you. King, as some fans already know, is the daughter of Jim Bob's sister Deanna Duggar. Although Deanna prefers to stay out of the spotlight, King is no stranger to dropping the headline-generating truth bombs about her family. King stunned fans in January 2015 when she admitted that her mom gave birth to her out of wedlock. Following some rumors about the juicy scandal, remember the Duggars don't believe in sex before marriage, King took to Instagram to clear the air. She captioned the photo, the tabloids are telling the truth. My mom and dad did have me out of wedlock. I'm sure my mom was scared, young, ridiculed, and felt ashamed. But wait, that's not the most surprising part of this story. Deanna waited 18 years to get hitched to Amy's dad Terry Jordan. And according to Radar Online, Deanna confessed as much in an early episode of what was then called 18 Kids and Counting, saying, Terry and I knew each other a long time ago, and I got pregnant with Amy. And so we dated each other on and off for quite some time. Then we finally decided, you know what, we need to get married. So we got married. We've been together three years. Better late than never, right? But the two split in 2015, so maybe not. Laundry Room Breakdown on the surface, Michelle Duggar appears to have her bustling household and parenting duties on lock. From Michelle's calm mannerisms, no matter the situation, to her organizational skills, one would assume she has it all together. Of course, not everything is as it seems, especially where it concerns Michelle's mental state. In a rare moment of candor, Michelle confessed that she lost it a bit during a particularly hard day at Chateau Duggar. According to a blog post, she wrote, It was 1 a.m. in the morning as I stood folding laundry with tears streaming down my cheeks. Feelings of being overwhelmed flooded my mind. I cried aloud, Lord, I need your help. I can't do it all. I feel so inadequate. Diapers, dishes, laundry, meals, cleanup, school lessons, baths, hugs, kisses, correction, my list seemed to go on and on. Oof, it sounds like Michelle had a lot on her plate. So how did she manage to pull it together? Look no further than her belief in God. Michelle continued in her blog post, then it was as if a still small voice said, Michelle, it's easy to praise me when things are going good, but are you willing to praise me now? I said, okay, Lord, I will praise you even now. In my heart, there was a release as if a burden had been lifted. I finished the laundry at 2 a.m. and went to bed. Well, there you go. Clash of the Sisters any counting on Die Hard can tell how much the Duggar sisters enjoy one another's company. In fact, the ladies' support for each other is often a focal point of the show. One episode covered how Jana literally assisted in Jess's delivery of her second son Henry. That's true love right there, guys. But as kind as Jana and Jessa are to each other now, things weren't always so hunky-dory between them. Jessa said about her surprising sibling rivalry with Jana on an episode of Counting On, I also had a very strong personality, and so I would sometimes protest the ideas that she had. She'd be like, we're gonna do this, and I'd be like, no, we're not. Luckily, that rivalry didn't last forever. We clashed heads a little bit when we were younger, but now that we're older, I don't know, like we work together well. Sometimes she'll take charge of the project, sometimes she'll let me lead. But Jessa might be downplaying how bad things got between them at one point. The Duggar family book Growing Up Duggar has the story. Following an intense period of fighting, Michelle forced the feuding girls to share a bunk bed, bottom for Jessa and top for Jana. Although Michelle intended for her parenting hack to go off without a hitch, Jessa ended up kicking Jana's bed in an effort to terrorize her sister during the night. Harsh. Secret Spying these days, it's not uncommon for people to stalk their love interests via social media prior to dating. But what happens if you aren't allowed on the internet unchaperoned? It's a little hard to creep on your potential significant other when you're not on Instagram. Well, it turns out Jill figured out a way to dig up info on her then-crush Derek Dillard without being on social media. In a bizarre twist that some people might consider to be jaw-dropping, Jill admitted to listening in on Dillard's phone calls to Jim Bob before they started dating. As it happens, Dillard and Jim Bob were prayer partners before the whole dating Jill thing started, and it required Dillard and Jim Bob to talk on the phone every so often. Jill recalled her spying on the family's website, as my dad got to know Derek, he was really impressed with his godly character. He started telling me about Derek and also told Derek about me. I listened in on a few phone conversations with my dad without Derek knowing I was doing so. Hmm. Ginger's Bad Deeds Out of all the kids in the Duggar family, Ginger Duggar often comes across as the most kind-hearted and upbeat one of the bunch. From kindly counseling her sisters on their fashion concerns to spending a lot of quality time with her younger siblings, there's a lot that fans admire about the reality star. So it might come as a bit of a shock to counting on viewers that Ginger committed bad deeds as a preteen. I grew up in a Christian home, of course, and so, um, but I realized at a young age that I was a sinner. Although it's not exactly clear what these bad deeds are, Ginger felt the need to confess her sinner ways to Jim, Bob, and Michelle when she was just 14 years old. And I came into my parents and I was like, I, I really need Jesus because I know that in my, in my own self, I'm not going to be able to get to heaven. 
Despite being so young, Ginger said she was like anyone else who had sinned. I have done so many bad deeds. I've sinned against God, and I cannot save myself from my sins. And so at that point, I was just like totally broken before God. Sounds intense. Who would have ever suspected that Ginger had such a bad side? Anyone who's watched TLC's 19 Kids and Counting or Counting On knows that the Duggar family does things a little differently. Kissing before marriage, booze, and women wearing pants are all strictly forbidden. But having lots of kids? Definitely a priority. Four of Michelle and Jim Bob's adult daughters, Jill, Jessa, Ginger, and Joy, have already tied the knot and are carrying on some of their parents' traditions. Here are some of the strange ways Duggar marriages veer off the beaten path. Marrying Young According to a 2013 report by The Atlantic, the average age of a first marriage was 27 for women and 29 for men, but the Duggar girls wed at a much younger age. Jill, the first Duggar daughter to tie the knot, wed Derek Dillard at age 23. Sister Jessa married at 21, and Ginger made it official at 22. As for Joy, she said I do at just 19, and it all could be due to the fact that the Duggars court rather than date. Jim Bob explained to people, Courting is getting to know each other in a group setting, both families spending time together and the couple setting goals together to determine if they are meant to marry. With dating, a couple will often pair off alone and that sometimes leads to a more physical relationship. And up until the most memorable day of their lives, there's gonna be zero hanky-panky. No locked lips while many Americans lose their virginity long before marriage, it's not uncommon for religious followers to abstain from sex until they've tied the knot. But the Duggars take it a step further, saving even kissing for marriage. Both go left or both go right. <laughs> You'll figure it out. It's not that complicated. According to the family rules, the girls all had their first kiss on their wedding day. They can only side-hug their dates, though they are allowed to hold hands once they're engaged. Hey, I'll tell you what. You can go ahead and give them a side-hug if you want to. 30 seconds. Jess's husband, Ben, explained that he and his wife saved physical intimacy for their wedding day, saying, From the outset of our relationship, we had some physical boundaries that we tried to set. In order to stay true to their chastity vows, all dates, phone calls, and texts are overseen by a chaperone, until they say, I do. Skirts before pants while most American women wear whatever they please, in the Duggar family, ladies wear only dresses or skirts at all times. I'm super into maxi skirts. Love maxi skirts. They're so comfortable. Mama Michelle explained in a TLC blog post that after she became a born-again Christian, she and Jim Bob discussed the best way for the women of the family to dress, saying, We really wanted to see what the scriptures said about modesty. Our interpretation was that from the neck down to the knee should be covered. But social media went crazy when then-married Ginger was photographed wearing shorts in 2017. After that, both she and her sister Jill were regularly spotted in pants, and even Joanna got in on the act, on her honeymoon. However, none of the Duggar daughters who still live at home, including 28-year-old Jana, have been spotted wearing pants. Yet. The more the merrier. As of 2015, the average family had 2.4 children, according to the Pew Research Center. But all of the married Duggar daughters say they'll be happy with as many kids as possible. Before her 2014 wedding, Jill told ABC News, Both of us want as many kids as God will give us, and we've talked about adoption. My parents have kept popping them out, so we'll see how our fertility is. Before conceiving a honeymoon baby at age 19, Joy told People, We want as many as the Lord thinks we can handle, and we are putting it into his hands. Jill and Jessa each had two sons within their first four years of marriage, and Joy welcomed her first child about nine months after tying the knot. Ginger is expecting her first baby in 2018 after a little more than a year of marriage. Controversial Couplings Joy's husband, Austin Forsyth, hails from a family that's attracted controversy by hosting events featuring so-called parenting experts Debbie and Mike Pearl. Their book, To Train Up a Child, advocates spanking kids with plastic tubing and forcing children to fast as punishment, according to the New York Times. The book was even reportedly found in the homes of three children who died of child abuse. Despite the controversy, the four Sifes have promoted the parenting book and advertising for the event, but more than one Duggar sister has consciously coupled up with the controversial partner. While gender equality may be on the minds of most Americans these days, Ginger's husband, Jeremy Volo, believes women were created for the sole purpose of serving their husbands. Jeremy wrote an essay, The first thing that God saw which was not good in his creation was that the man was alone and, therefore, he made him a helper suitable to him. But Jill's husband, Derek Dillard, takes the title of the most controversial 
controversial Duggar son-in-law. Once a fan favorite on Counting On, Derek lost to love when he posted a number of hot-button comments to his Twitter page. He took aim at Jazz Jennings, a 17-year-old transgender girl whose life was profiled on TLC's I Am Jazz, accusing Jazz's parents and TLC of taking advantage of her, and refused to call her by her preferred pronoun, writing, Transgender is a myth. Gender is not fluid, it's ordained by God. TLC then announced it would no longer work with Derek. And T, in turn, announced that no one in his family would be appearing on TLC, including Jill. Staying on the wagon According to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism in 2015, 86% of Americans over the age of 18 have consumed alcohol at least once in their lifetime, and the Duggar ladies and their husbands definitely break with the norm by refusing any alcoholic beverages. All of the daughters threw dry weddings, and both Ginger and Jill have revealed on social media that they drink sparkling juice for special occasions. Mom Michelle is so opposed to alcohol that, in 2009, she and other family members protested an Arkansas convenience store that had applied for a permit to sell beer. The store's assistant manager told a local news station at the time, I was told the Duggars were there protesting it and that Mrs. Duggar was up there crying. And she said that she didn't want alcohol in her neighborhood or her town. So we got turned down for it. Looks like the apples don't fall far from the tree. Considering Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar are parents to 19 kids, you'd think they'd have some financial struggles. Parenting is expensive, especially when you have nearly 20 mouths to feed. But the Duggars make things work, a phenomenon that many people have questions about. From the 19 kids and counting fans' vacations around the globe to their horde of private planes, Jim, Bob, and Michelle are definitely doing something right when it comes to their finances. So how do the lights stay on at the Duggar house? As it turns out, a lot of factors are involved in their financial success. No matter what you might think about the Duggars, you have to admit their financial predicament is fascinating. Here's the truth about how the Duggars pay for everything. High Demand Whether you agree with the Duggar family's conservative views or not, there's no denying they have a huge fan base who are willing to pay top dollar to hear Jim, Bob, and Michelle speak on a variety of issues. From marriage advice to raising a faith-based family, the Duggars are often booked by churches or other venues for speaking events. It will do this as long as you don't edit out our faith, because if you edit out our faith, you're really not telling the whole story. Event organizers can expect to shell out up to $15,000 for the couple. And if you're wondering if the family pays their own way to these events, the answer is probably no. Worth Every Penny Many celebs author books to earn some extra cash, and this family is no exception. Collectively, the Duggars have written three books since they first became famous in 2008. Jim, Bob, and Michelle have two books under their belts, A Love That Multiplies and The Duggars, 20 and Counting. Additionally, Jessa, Jill, Jana, and Ginger Duggar penned a book about their conservative upbringing titled Growing Up Duggar. Everything is centered around like character, so learning kindness and patience and self-control. Although it's unclear how much money the family has earned from their book sales, it's worth noting Growing Up Duggar earned a spot on the New York Times bestsellers list. Keeping the Cash Flow Throughout the years, the Duggars have experimented with online fundraisers to support their careers and personal endeavors. The family member most known to go this route is Jill's husband, Derek Dillard. Dillard, who quit his job as an accountant at Walmart in June 2015, often resorts to GoFundMe to pay for his international missionary work. He wrote on his GoFundMe in November 2017, Big news, I am currently serving through a program at my home church called the Cross Church School of Ministry. I am so excited about this incredible opportunity for further ministry development, and I would like to invite you to share in this excitement with me. I have a donations goal of $10,000. This will enable me to fulfill my specific calling to ministry this year, including trips for gospel advancement and humanitarian work in Northwest Arkansas, North America, and abroad. Although Dillard hit his funding goal, not many people were happy with his efforts. According to Radar Online, a fan said of one of his previous fundraisers, Here we go again with asking people for money. I thought it is Derek's responsibility to provide for their family. Neither one has employment and it's getting ridiculous. Upcycling those goods One of the Duggar family's claims to fame is that they buy everything used. We've done it our whole lives. I mean, it's, you know, you pass down the clothes from the oldest kid to the youngest kid and saving money. It's a safe bet that the family would be out on the streets if they didn't invest in hand-me-downs. So what does the family buy used? Just about everything, including their cars. Jim Bob told Parenting, We've never bought a new vehicle. We've always bought used vehicles. We buy them at an auction wholesale. We can drive them for several years and turn around and get our money back out of them. As for Michelle, she's also on board with the whole buying used thing, saying, We get our clothes at thrift shops. You can find really nice name brand stuff. Our girls love it. They will find tons of stuff. It's true that the family often frequents thrift shops, and there are tons of episodes to prove it. 
the family flea market. When you have 19 kids, old clothes and unwanted items can pile up quickly. This is the first time in 24 years that we don't have a baby in diapers. And a great solution to all the clutter is hosting garage sales and flea markets to make some bank on your old junk. Of course, the Duggar family can't host your average garage sale with a couple piles of clothes. I have found a lot of baby clothes <laughs> um, that I have bought for family members and just so they can say, I've got part of the Duggars. <laughs> the family's 2013 flea market boasted bake sales, a dunking booth, and a ton of stuff to buy. Incredibly, the family earned over $2,000 just two hours into the huge event, as documented by TLC. But throwing a garage sale isn't just about money for the Duggars, they enjoy getting rid of stuff to stay organized. Michelle told TLC, Decluttering is really important. For starters, I always tell the kids that if stuff comes in the house, we have to take other stuff out. We give things to friends that can use them or sell them at a yard sale. There's just not enough space for everything. That's social media influence. If you follow the Duggar family social media accounts, you might have noticed that they often give shoutouts to various restaurants and fast food chains like Chick-fil-A. From dressing up like the chain's cow mascot to uploading shots of Chick-fil-A's food, it's clear the Duggars are big fans of this restaurant. One has to wonder, however, if their love for the restaurant and other chains they promote is motivated by cold, hard cash. Some people suspect that the family has partnered with these establishments and make it a financial kickback each time they mention a partnership on Instagram. If this theory is true, it's possible that the family rakes in thousands of dollars per sponsored ad. Side Hustle Although it might be surprising to some people, the Duggars work a lot of side jobs. In fact, almost every member of the family has a gig outside of reality TV. Take John David Duggar, who dabbles in construction work and is a Washington County constable. Additionally, John David has his pilot's license, which means he can charge a fee to fly passengers around the U.S. John David's younger sister, Jill, also has her own career. For years, Jill has worked as a midwife to clients in the Arkansas area, a gig she often discussed on Counting On. And now that Jill is no longer part of the series, many assume she'll resume her midwife work to support her family. As for Jim, Bob, and Michelle's son-in-law, Austin Forsyth might be the family member with the most lucrative side gig. Austin and his dad, Terry, co-run a house flipping business. Wise Investments Many people don't know that Jim Bob is pretty savvy regarding real estate investments. After Jim Bob bought his first property for $65,000, he quickly learned just how profitable the real estate business could be. A friend shared on the Duggar family blog, Just 30 days after purchasing the property, a real estate agent brought Jim Bob and Michelle a client who was willing to rent the property for $1,200 a month. The contract stated that the renter could buy the property in 24 months for $250,000. Two years later, he decided to purchase the land for a quarter of a million dollars. This three-acre lot that the Duggars had bought for just $65,000 had already provided a nice sum of money from the rent checks and now they were going to receive even more. Maybe we'll be seeing Jim Bob on HGTV one day. Getting Crafty One of the Duggar family's money-saving tricks involves do-it-yourself projects. For instance, Jim Bob and Michelle make their own laundry detergent instead of buying it. The Duggars save a ton of money by making their own household products and other frequently used items. Not only that, but the Duggars built their massive family home instead of purchasing it off the real estate market. The Arkansas Traveler reported, The Duggars built the all-steel house from a kit, debt-free, and what began as a family project came to include the assistance of extended family from the church and dear friends. Reality TV Money Obviously, the Duggars make most of their money via good old reality TV. When 19 Kids and Counting was on the air, E! News reported that producer Terrence Michael estimated that the family brought home $25,000 to $40,000 for four or five days' work, which is roughly how long it takes to film a typical episode. When you consider that shooting schedule, the family probably earns anywhere from $6,000 to $10,000 a day. That's enough for a whole lot of Chick-fil-A. When Jill Duggar introduced 19 Kids and Counting viewers to her future husband, Derek Dillard, fans were beyond happy Jill had found the one. A college grad, Dillard held a lucrative accounting job at Walmart when the couple started courting. But a few years following the couple's wedding in June 2014, the public's perception of Dillard changed. Whether it was his controversial antics on social media, public fights with fellow TLC stars, or rumored feuds with Duggar's loved ones, Dillard didn't seem interested in repairing his tarnished image. But what's fact and what's fiction when it comes to Dillard's life? Here's the truth about Jill Duggar's husband. Family Drama in 2008, Derek Dillard's police officer father, Rick, passed away at age 50 from a heart attack, long before Derek met Jill. Derek was still a freshman at Oklahoma State University when he learned the news. Later in 2014, his mom, Kathy Byram, was diagnosed with stage 4 non-Hodgkin lymphoma, just two weeks after Dillard proposed to Duggar. But luckily for the family, Byram is four years cancer-free as of April 2018. 
calling out the network. One of Dillard's more controversial claims is that TLC never paid him nor his wife for their work on 19 Kids and Counting or Counting On. This allegation came to light when Dillard said that TLC didn't foot the bill for his eldest son's delivery. He wrote in since deleted tweets, We even requested that they help with some of the medical expenses from the birth that they made a pretty penny on, but they refused to help cover any of those costs. Of course, fans pointed out that the couple's counting on salaries could cover the costs since it's estimated that the family makes $25,000 to $40,000 per episode. But Dillard claimed, As far as we could tell, we were volunteers and hadn't been paid anything for the show. Either way, TLC has yet to release a statement about the legitimacy of Dillard's claims. Blowing up social media If you follow Dillard on Instagram, you probably already know he's a fan of stirring up drama. But fans think Dillard crossed a major line when he used his son, Israel, to joke about Trump's border wall, posting, Israel helping Trump build the wall, lol. Unsurprisingly, fans weren't amused. One comment read, This isn't appropriate to teach a child. Let him be a kid and don't use him for your political agenda. The Family Ministry Many fans wondered how Dillard was ever able to launch his own nonprofit, Dillard Family Ministries, without any qualifications. Although Dillard performed missionary work prior to launching the ministry in June 2015, according to Inquisitor, he never completed the 20 to 30 graduate hours from an accredited university he needed in order to get funding from the Southern Baptist Convention and the International Mission Board. If a ministry doesn't have funding, it isn't considered licensed. And since he wasn't technically licensed, it was no surprise that Dillard and Duggar were pressured by fans to refund donations to their cause. The pair finally dissolved the ministry in April 2017. Shading the TLC Family Shortly after TLC tweeted a promo for transgender-focused series, I Am Jazz, in August 2017, Dillard tweeted to star Jazz Jennings, What an oxymoron, a reality show which follows a non-reality. Transgender is a myth, gender is not fluid, it's ordained by God. To Jennings' credit, she took Dillard's comments in stride, tweeting, Every day I experience cyberbullying, but I keep sharing my story. Today was no different. Attacking other parents Dillard didn't limit his Twitter attacks to just one other TLC alum. He also attacked famed interior designer Nate Burkus and his family. Commenting on a TLC promo for Burkus and Brent's TLC design show, Dillard wrote, What a travesty of family. It's sad how blatant the liberal agenda is, such that it both highlights and celebrates a lifestyle so degrading to children on public television as if it should be normal. Burkus then graciously tweeted a follow-up, writing, my hope with having a show like Nate and Jeremiah by design, where we go into people's homes and welcome viewers into ours, is that we can start to break down barriers and normalize the way our family looks and the way our family loves. Kicked off counting on. Shortly after Dillard's hateful comments against Jennings, TLC released a statement in November 2017, tweeting, We want to let our viewers know that Derek Dillard has not participated in Counting On for months and the network has no plans to feature him in the future. Although many people assume that Dillard was fired, he tweeted in December 2017, For the record, I was never fired. I just felt it best for my family to cut ties months ago, as we are heading in a different direction. So what's the real story here? The answer remains unclear. But this probably isn't the last we've heard of Derek Dillard. Out of all of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar's 19 kids, their eldest daughter, Jana, is arguably the most low-key. But there's a lot more to this Duggar daughter than meets the eye. From Tim Tebow dating rumors to complicated relationships with her siblings to persistent speculation as to just what team she's playing for in the love department, here's the untold truth of Jana Duggar. The thing with Tim Tebow it's unusual for an NFL star to hook up with a lesser-known TLC reality star, but rumors swirled in 2014 that Jana and former NFL quarterback Tim Tebow were an item. The gossip reached a fever pitch after Jim Bob met Tebow's mother, Pat, at a charity event in 2014. At the time, the rumors made sense because Jana and Tebow were both deeply religious and are two years apart in age. Plus, many fans were right to think that Jim Bob might have tried to make a match through Pat since he set up his daughters before. But Tebow's rep shut down the rumor mill in December 2014, saying the two had never even met. The Family Spinster At a January 2018 event in Australia, Jim Bob seemingly mocked Jana for being single in front of an entire church full of people. Jana is now 28 years old and uh Still single, so she's still praying about the one in the world. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, many fans were outraged by the remark. One tweeted, I'm half surprised that Jim Bob Duggar hasn't tried to force Jana into an arranged marriage by now. In the rest of America, other than on The Bachelor, being single at 28 is no big deal. And another chimed in, Attention Jim Bob, your daughter is smart, beautiful, and has an amazing heart. 
Remember that before you go making fun of her for being 28 and single. Jana vs. Jessa Some fans might be shocked to learn that Jana and her younger sister Jessa kind of hated each other as kids. Things got so bad that Michelle forced the girls to share bunk beds a story that was recounted in the Duggar sisters' book Growing Up Duggar. But Jessa, who was assigned the bottom bunk, would spend her nights kicking Jana's bed. As for the pair's relationship as adults, Jessa said on Counting On, We clashed heads a little bit when we were younger, but now that we're older, I don't know, like we work together well. Chilling on those wedding bells Unlike her younger sisters, Jana isn't laser-focused on getting married. A source told Radar Online in January 2015, Jana has been pursued by several guys. She has never gotten to the courting phase with anyone, but she has spoken with interested men after church. Jana's extremely picky. She wants the real deal and won't settle for less. I'm not just out to get married to the first one that comes along. The Other Romance Rumors Celebs often face gossip about their orientation, and Jana Duggar is no exception. Fans speculate that Jana could be a lesbian because of her longtime single status, a theory the reality star has never denied or confirmed. But people can't seem to let go of the idea that Jana is supposedly dating her best friend, Laura. Laura is often pictured with Jana, and she sometimes accompanies her on trips. Laura even tagged along when Jana flew to Texas to visit her younger sister, Ginger. In August 2017, a source told The Hollywood Gossip that Jana prefers the company of other women. Of course, Jana should do Jana, but only time will tell if these rumors are true. Is she leaving reality TV? In March 2015, a source told OK Magazine that Jana might be leaving the Duggar house for good, alleging, she told her parents that she was looking at Christian colleges and would be applying soon. Jana knows she needs to get on with her education if she doesn't want to be stuck at her mom and dad's house in Arkansas for the rest of her life. The source went on to reveal that Jim Bob supposedly tried to talk Jana out of leaving, and he might just have gotten his way. As of May 2018, Jana has yet to pursue a college education. Kids. Someday. Just because Jana isn't overly enthusiastic about love and marriage, it doesn't mean she's closed off to having kids someday. In March 2016, on Counting On, Jana revealed her five-year plan, saying, Well, maybe, you know, I'll meet the one and, you know, get married and have kids and stuff. But right now, Jana's just fine with where she is. These days, she's... Just being busy with where God has me right now and being content in this place. Ginger Volo is the sixth-born child of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar, the famous parents responsible for the hit reality show 19 Kids and Counting, which collapsed in 2015 under a mountain of controversy. Of her eight sisters and ten brothers, Ginger has managed to stand out as the relatively rebellious one, a social media favorite who inspired campaigns from fans urging her to escape her family's conservative brand of Christianity. Here's a look at what sets Ginger apart from the rest of the Duggar family. Hugging it out while Ginger and husband Jeremy Volo's official website suggests they're committed to Christian values, there are signs that the pair may not be fully on board with the Duggar family's ultra-conservative brand of spirituality. For example, Ma and Pa Duggar maintain strict rules about physical contact while dating. As the Inquisitor notes, family patriarch Jim Bob is famously so afraid of normal hugs causing impure thoughts and feelings that he only allows his kids to side-hug each other. But as Ginger took her courtship with Jeremy to the next level, The Hollywood Gossip reported that they may have violated the rules by giving each other a front hug. Fans were reportedly abuzz after a clip from the spin-off Counting On revealed the supposedly scandalous squeeze. In one episode, Jeremy said they typically express affection in a more conservative way. Ginger and I are both very affectionate. It means a lot to have an arm around each other or something. And that's how we express our affection. We have a clean conscience as long as it's not leading us to impurity. The pair even waited until their wedding day to kiss. Super special moment. They're together. Everybody witnessed it. Maybe a little awkward if we miss, but hey, we're gonna do it anyways. You may be thinking, what's the big deal about a little front hug? Well, it's just one of many strict Duggar dating rules. The family also believe parents should chaperone all of their kids' dates, regardless of how old the kids are, until after they get married. Ginger and Jeremy appear to be only slightly less conservative. If we open a lot of doors physically, then the time spent together basically becomes a time of saying, okay, we can't cross this line, we can't cross this line, and it becomes difficult. Hubby's checkered past. In 2008, years before Ginger and Jeremy met, the former Major League Soccer star and current pastor was arrested for harassing a police officer during a drunken night in college, according to In Touch. 
The police report said Jeremy was acting belligerent and shouting obscenities. Jeremy has admitted he was part of the college party scene, but after the arrest, he supposedly stopped living foolishly and became a minister. As if that wasn't scandalous enough, the tabloid reports that Jeremy also has a tattoo, which is another big no-no for the Duggars. While it's hard to make out what he has inked on his body, many viewers have speculated that it's a Bible verse, considering his dedication to his religion. Wedding Day Woes in 2015, the Duggar family's wholesome public image imploded when Michelle and Jim Bob revealed that their oldest child, Josh, had molested four of his sisters and a babysitter when he was a teen, and they were minors. While Jill and Jessa have spoken publicly about their family's ordeal, Ginger has remained quiet on the topic. Just a few short months after their engagement, Ginger and Jeremy tied the knot on November 5, 2016. Producers of Counting On reportedly worked frantically to incorporate the wedding into the spin-off show's second season, but there was just one problem — Josh. According to the Daily Mail, Josh was banned from appearing on TLC after his molestation scandal prompted the network to cancel 19 Kids and Counting. The camera crew apparently had to get very creative to obscure his presence at the nuptials, showing only the back of his head or taking advantage of strategic angles on some shots, blocking out Josh in the background. Dress Code Breaker Ginger has made waves for wearing pants and sometimes even shorts, which her parents do not deem appropriate for women, according to The Hollywood Gossip. However, there's an asterisk connected to Ginger's pants rebellion. She's reportedly only allowed to wear slacks because her husband permits it. The tabloid said Jeremy addressed women's wardrobes during one of his sermons in Texas. It is your liberty as to whether you dress modestly with a modest pair of pants, or with a skirt, or with a t-shirt, or with a blouse. It is not your liberty, women, to wear sensual, seductive clothing that is designed to draw the attention of your brothers. Globetrotter while her parents would reportedly prefer for their kids to stay close to their homestead in Arkansas, Ginger expressed the desire to live in a city back in 2012, and Jeremy, a New Jersey native, proposed in the Big Apple. Is big city living in their future? Mama Michelle told Radar Online back in 2013, New York City is way above what we would ever consider a city where she should move. As of the making of this video, Ginger and Jeremy are residing in Laredo, Texas, but this move still makes Ginger the first member of her family to permanently relocate, according to People. Rumors began swirling in September 2017 that the young couple may even be considering a big jump across the pond to pursue a job opportunity in Scotland. Considering the former homebody also chose to honeymoon in Australia, this dramatic untethering from her huge core family wouldn't be that out of character. We just hung out with a batch of kangaroos yesterday. Oh, they're you did? The cutest things in the world. They're very cute, aren't they? Very cute and delicious. Thanks to reality TV, the Duggars are now a household name. But what's known about the ever-expanding brood before TLC came knocking? From a failed political career to the origins of those dating and dress code rules, we uncover it all with what the Duggars' lives were like before the fame. Long before the Duggar family was a household name, Michelle and Jim Bob Duggar preferred a modest dress code for their kids. The boys wore matching slacks paired with polos or dress shirts, while the girls donned big and puffy dresses with pleated collars. What a time to be alive, right? Well, not where the kids were concerned. Joy Duggar said about her former wardrobe, "...they were like bags. We wore those until I was like 12." Jessa Duggar also chimed in, "...I definitely have those moments I look back and say, man, that was rough. That was a rough patch." Of course, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the Duggar women's preference for crunchy perms and long locks way back when. Michelle, for instance, kept her signature hairstyle for 46 years before getting a makeover in 2012. Michelle described the transformation as a shock, according to People. Although all of the Duggar women still rock long hair, they've switched their clothes up throughout the years. A few Duggar sisters have even sported pants post-marriage. And speaking of really cutting loose, Jill Duggar pierced her nose in November 2017. The times, they are changing. Although it's hard to imagine the Duggar family shacked up in anything other than a 7,000-square-foot complex, they used to live in a small three-bed, two-bath rancher prior to 2006. The house was first featured on 14 Children and Pregnant Again, the Duggars' first televised special with TLC in 2004. And many fans couldn't believe the large clan was able to coexist in the 2,450-square-foot property. It probably won't come as a surprise to people that life at the Duggars' first chateau was far from perfect. Jill Duggar agreed with that sentiment, telling cameras about the family's bathroom dilemma. We have to split up the showers and baths for um, the, half the people get them in the morning, half the people get them in the evening, and whoever's the dirtiest gets them first. Luckily for the Duggar kids, their current home has nine bathrooms and seven showers. What a relief. Clearly, the family outgrew their small house about six babies back. 
It's not uncommon to hear about the Duggar family jetting off to international destinations like Australia and Scotland, to name a few. In fact, multiple 19 Kids and Counting episodes were dedicated to the Duggar family's trip to Japan and China in 2013. But prior to the clan's jet-setting ways, they had never left the United States. TLC captured one of the first big trips the family ever took in 2006 for a special called On the Road with 16 Children. It was the Duggar family cross-country road trip to Los Angeles, and let's just say the vacation wasn't glamorous. It involved a cramped RV and stays at public campgrounds. Michelle Duggar tried to make the best of the seemingly stressful situation. There has to be rules or else there would be chaos. And still yet, there's sometimes there's chaos anyway. When 19 Kids and Counting was known as 17 Kids and Counting, Michelle and Jim Bob Duggar would often wax poetic about their list of dating rules. It's common knowledge that the Duggar siblings can't be alone with their paramours pre-marriage, for instance, as Jim Bob believes it can lead to moments of weakness. Jim Bob said, As far as our kids dating, we believe a lot of times if you are alone with the person, it can create desires that can kind of get stirred up, and you don't have any accountability, and that can kind of lead to some hanky-panky. No hanky-panky. God, you have not dated in a long time, have you? Another interesting courtship rule? Dating Duggars couldn't talk on the phone unchaperoned. Yep, that's right. There's even footage of Jim Bob and Michelle listening in on one of their daughter Jill's conversations with her now husband, Derek Dillard. These days, Michelle and Jim Bob have loosened up a little. When their daughter Jessa started dating her now husband, Ben Seawald, the two were allowed to talk on the phone privately for an hour each night. But then again, those two have always walked on the wild side. I'm gonna be adventurous and get the manga habanero. Jim Bob Duggar is quick to share with fans his story of self-made financial success. And to be fair, Jim Bob did hustle a lot prior to fame, buying commercial real estate properties to later transform into rental buildings. In fact, Jim Bob converted a 37,000-square-foot chicken hatchery into 10 rental units, and he rented out a cell phone tower to mobile phone carriers, according to Business Insider. The dad of 19 also worked as a used car and insurance salesman to make ends meet. Jim Bob and Michelle continued their trend of hard work in the beginning of their reality television careers, often organizing meet-and-greets with fans. But all of this hustling slowed down once 19 Kids and Counting became a national phenomenon. The Duggars switched to healthier diets after they gained national attention, a fact Michelle Duggar touched on in a May 2013 blog post for TLC. She wrote, Jim Bob is definitely eating a lot more fresh vegetables, fish, and chicken, and trying to stay away from fried foods. He's really eating smaller portions and avoiding the junk food. The family's food has changed a lot with Jim Bob's. My kids really love fresh vegetables and fruit. When we can keep it in the house and get it at a good price, we really stuck up. But before the family planted its own garden and converted to healthy eating, it feasted on tater tot casseroles. Yep, that's right, folks. The Duggar staple that just so happens to be Jim Bob's favorite dish was extensively explained on TLC's special 14 Children and Pregnant Again. Jokes aside, it makes sense the Duggars relied on tater tot casseroles in the early days. Raising 19 kids is expensive, to say the least. So we're gonna need five pounds of ground beef, some tater tots, and some cans of evaporated milk, cans of mushroom soup. You're gonna love it, Jeremy. Yeah, I can't wait. TLC's 19 Kids and Counting was once among the hottest shows on television, but then a series of shocking scandals led to the show's abrupt cancellation. Josh Duggar's unconscionable actions weren't the only off-screen moments the series didn't show you, though. Here are some other things they didn't want you to see. It's no secret Duggar family weddings are big, often drawing crowds of over 1,000 people. And that's just counting Michelle and Jim Bob's children. Seriously, though, these things can be a lot harder to put together than they want you to think, as shown by Josiah and Lauren Duggar's wedding. TLC's official version made it look like the perfect ceremony, but that apparently wasn't the case. One insider told Radar Online, The whole event was chaotic. Everything was messed up. The organizer messed everything up for the volunteers and the venue. The wedding was still being set up the afternoon of. Jill Duggar's husband, Derek Dillard, has been a lightning rod for controversy, starting from the moment he tried to sled over a cat. Okay. <laughs> okay, push him, push him, push him! Woo! <laughs> Pet lovers weren't happy. PETA's director of Christian Outreach, Sarah Withrow King, released a statement that read in part, might doesn't make right, but that's the message you have sent to scores of impressionable young children and loyal fans. I hope you'll publicly apologize for your actions and remind your followers that Jesus' command to do unto others includes all of God's creatures. 
So far, Dillard has yet to respond. Of course, this case of attempted felinicide isn't even close to the worst thing Dillard's done to get himself into big trouble. In 2017, Derek Dillard was fired from the spin-off series Counting On for transphobic comments regarding TLC star Jazz Jennings. He wasted no time clapping back with a series of angry tweets, first blasting the network for not pitching in any money for his son's post-delivery medical bills, and then following up with a homophobic rant excoriating the network for their series Nate and Jeremiah by design. Sadly, Dillard's outburst also wasn't the first time the Duggar family allegedly spoke out against members of the LGBTQ community. An anonymous tipster who claimed to have worked on the show told Gawker that back in 2008, Michelle Duggar threw a fit when she discovered that a crew member was gay. Producers reportedly removed the crew member immediately. And that's not all. On future tapings, when new crews would be swapped in, they were suspiciously more and more straight-edged Christian. As long as the Duggars are comfortable and safe from the scary city gays, all went according to plan. Michelle Duggar is best known for her sugary, sweet voice and her calm demeanor. But when TLC's production crew leaves for the day, the mom of 19 allegedly drops that positive persona like a hot potato. TLC has been careful not to show this, but fans got a sneak peek at the real Michelle in an Instagram Live clip. While sternly admonishing one of her children, Michelle realizes the camera is on, and she suddenly turns on the fake charm. Fans online weren't having it, with one Reddit soothsayer writing, Michelle's personality switch is truly haunting. In February 2018, Amy Duggar King, aka Michelle and Jim Bob Duggar's niece, made a big boo-boo when she shared, then quickly deleted, a post-delivery photo of her cousin, Joy Anna Forsyth, to Instagram. Sure, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but consider that the Duggars like to keep their deliveries private. Worse, though, is the fact that the photo showed the delivery taking place in a hospital rather than the home births the Duggars usually advocate. Of course, both those rules routinely go out the window when there's a TV special involved, so it still doesn't sound like a big deal. But apparently, it was, because in June 2018, an insider told Radar Online, Amy is not allowed to talk about the Duggars anymore. Amy went through her Instagram and had to delete all the pictures she had with her cousins. Reality star Michelle Duggar has kept some big secrets under wraps over the years. While Michelle waxes poetic on 19 Kids and Counting about the importance of living a squeaky clean and honest life, she's been hiding some alleged dirt of her own. Fans of 19 Kids and Counting might have noticed the odd fact that Michelle rarely talks about her extended family on camera. One might reason that her silence is due to privacy concerns, but that theory doesn't add up when you consider that Jim Bob's relatives have made numerous cameos on the series. So what gives? One likely scenario is that Michelle may be ashamed of her lesbian sister, Evelyn. Evelyn, who appeared once on the show in 2008, is rumored to be on the outs with her younger sibling, a revelation that might surprise her family-oriented fanbase. Evelyn and Michelle reportedly haven't been pictured together since 2014. If you ask Evelyn's partner of three decades, Sharon Callahan, the awkward situation might be beyond repair, thanks to Michelle's involvement in the Quiverful movement. The Quiverful movement supposedly preaches anti-LGBTQ views a suspicion that Callahan finds concerning. According to the Daily Mail, Callahan said in December 2014, "...we are worried about them. We have often thought that Quiverful is a cult. It appears to be brainwashing to me." Considering Michelle is tight-lipped about pretty much everything besides her kids' weddings and pregnancies, people were understandably shocked when she admitted to struggling with bulimia as a young teen. In a rare moment of candor, Michelle revealed that she became bulimic at age 14 in an attempt to cope with her body image issues. She told People magazine, I found out that genetically I could put on weight easily, but with my activities, gymnastics, and cheerleading, it was important for me not to. I would look around and compare myself to my friend saying, oh my, she's so small, or she has such skinny legs. Her condition grew severe. She went on to say, I didn't tell any of my friends what I was going through. I was doing it sometimes on a daily basis, or sometimes I would go a week. I felt this was the answer to my problems. It was destructive for my health my life. Luckily, Michelle was able to overcome this serious issue when she met her now husband, Jim Bob, at age 16. Michelle revealed that after she told Jim Bob her secret, she was, in her words, set free, because he held her accountable each time she expressed a desire to go back to her old habits. The support Jim Bob provided Michelle during this time is one of the reasons she fell deeply in love with him. Speaking of Jim Bob, it sounds like he got a little action from Michelle before the two got hitched. That's right, Michelle broke one of her infamous courtship rules with Jim Bob pre-marriage. But for those wandering minds out there, rest assured we're just talking about a kiss. 
According to Us Weekly, Michelle admitted, We did not save our first kiss for our wedding day, and we really regret that we didn't. We really should have. Of course, a smooch between two people who aren't dating isn't a big deal for most people. Keep in mind, however, that this is one of the most conservative couples around. Michelle and Jim Bob force their kids to take chaperones on their dates. Smacking lips during the dating stage is a big no-no in Duggarland, even if you plan to spend the rest of your lives together. So the fact that Michelle and Jim Bob ignored this rule themselves is pretty remarkable. You don't need to be a 19 kids and counting diehard to know that Michelle prefers conservative clothing, to put it mildly. From prairie-style dresses to Michelle's controversial beliefs about dressing modestly, her distaste of revealing outfits is no secret. That being said, here's a truth bomb for you. Michelle supposedly was a fan of bikinis during her teenage years. One of Michelle's former neighbors claims Michelle wore skimpy bathing suits while she mowed the lawn, according to Star Magazine. The source revealed, The neighbors used to complain because she'd mow the lawn in a bikini and wear short skirts. They were always trying to get her to cover up her legs. And so were her parents. Needless to say, the ex-neighbor was shocked by Michelle's transformation from rebel teen to the woman who told TLC, By keeping those private areas covered, there's not any defrauding going on. My kids are taught the definition of defrauding as stirring up desires that cannot be righteously fulfilled. We don't believe in defrauding others by the way we dress. I would need to probably cover a few more areas of, of myself so that I wasn't causing someone else to be defrauded. When the tea-spilling neighbor was asked about Michelle's transformation, he told Star, I've seen commercials for the show, but I never in a million years would have believed that's Michelle. One of Michelle's most well-known traits is her soft, baby-like voice. Sometimes she speaks so quietly that it's hard to make out what she's saying. Considering how iconic her sweet-sounding mannerisms are, it may surprise you that she struggles with her temper. According to the Christian Post, Michelle admitted, I don't always stay calm. Years ago, the Lord really broke my heart about my anxiousness and my anger. I think we all struggle with that. The feelings of frustration and anger building up and how do we deal with that? It's like a, a walk down memory lane, really. Apparently, Michelle's anger issues became so overwhelming that she felt the need to apologize to her kids. She recalled, I just began to cry. I said, I want you children to know that mommy loves you, and I really am a nice person, and I don't want you to think I'm this mean mommy. Following Michelle's revelation about her self-described mean mommy ways, she decided to no longer raise her voice. By God's grace, I chose to lower my voice and even whisper. As upfront as Michelle might be about her conservative views, she's less forthcoming about her family members. Case in point, when her sister Kathy Ann Arnold passed away in March 2013 at age 60, she didn't say one peep about the sad news publicly. Although it's not clear how Arnold passed or if Michelle attended the funeral, it seems that this information was intentionally kept a secret. But why? One possible scenario is that Michelle was never close with Arnold, a theory that's backed up by a quote from her other sister Evelyn, who told In Touch Weekly, I think my mother and father wanted two different families, because Michelle and Carol are the second generation, and the rest of us, the first five, were pretty much grown when they were younger. If Michelle didn't grow up with Arnold, it might explain why she chose not to address her passing with fans. Another possibility is that Michelle wanted to keep it a family matter rather than a televised event. Although it's difficult to imagine Michelle with anyone other than Jim Bob, it's rumored that she dated other guys before they met. Apparently, Michelle's suitors were attracted to her bubbly persona and cheerleading uniform. One friend from high school told Radar Online, Michelle was a pretty popular cheerleader who dated more than a few guys before Jim Bob. The cheerleaders and football players all hung out and partied together, and she was a part of that group. I can't believe she's changed so much. Picturing Michelle as a partying cheerleader is pretty juicy, considering she's adopted an entirely new way of life. Not only does Michelle abstain from drinking, but there's no way she would view casually playing the field as acceptable for her own daughters. It's not necessarily earth-shattering news that the Duggars are rumored to hold anti-LGBTQ views. In fact, Michelle basically confirmed as much when she protested an anti-discriminatory ordinance protecting the rights of transgender people by recording a robocall against the ordinance. In the recorded message, she attacked a proposed bill protecting a transgender person's ability to use public restrooms without restrictions, according to the Fayetteville Flyer. Although Michelle's ideas about the LGBTQ community aren't too surprising, fans might find it hard to believe that she was allegedly more open-minded in high school. A woman who went to high school with her told Radar Online, she was honestly one of the loveliest, sweetest people you could ever hope to meet. Her classmate was reportedly furious about the robocall. The insider added, I don't understand what has happened to her heart. When you use your words, actions, money, and fame to further discriminate against an already marginalized group of people, you are a hateful bigot. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how Michelle conceived her 19 kids. You don't end up with a soccer team of kids if you're using contraceptives, right? But as it turns out, Michelle did use birth control at the beginning of her marriage to Jim Bob. 
What's especially interesting to note is that Jim Bob was the one who spilled Michelle's birth control secret. He wrote in a 2016 blog post, Believe it or not, when we first got married, we decided we did not want to have children right away. So Michelle began taking birth control pills. Three years into our marriage, Michelle went off the pill and we had our first child. Then she went back on the pill because we heard it was better to space your children out. But Michelle got pregnant while she was on the pill, and the pill caused her to miscarry. The idea that birth control can cause a miscarriage has been widely dismissed as a myth by top medical professionals. But the story isn't over just yet. Jim Bob also revealed that the couple stopped using birth control because of the miscarriage. He added, We were so grieved. We had lost our second child. We asked God to forgive us, and we told God we want to follow Him with our lives and receive any blessings He wants to send our way. Considering Michelle is one of the most religious people on reality television, you might assume she had a religious past. But shockingly enough, Michelle didn't grow up in a religious household, and she didn't attend church until she was a teenager. She told Love to Know, When I was 15, I got saved and committed my life to the Lord. It was the first time I'd ever heard what Jesus had done for me, and I had a hunger to learn about the things of God. A friend went to the same church Jim Bob went to. She invited me to her church. Michelle's religious conversion led her into the arms of an already very religious Jim Bob. She recalled one of their first hangouts, saying, He brought me home and we discussed the Bible for four hours. I remember when he left, I looked up and said, Father, I can't imagine anyone better than this that you have planned for me. He's such a godly man. Lust can be a powerful thing. You never know when it's going to strike. But Michelle has invented a way to nip lustful thoughts in the bud, using a code word. In the 2014 book Growing Up Duggar, the four Duggar daughters revealed that when they encountered, quote, someone dressed inappropriately, their family used the code word Nike to help the men immediately stop thinking those kinds of thoughts about women. The Duggar girls wrote, That's a signal to the boys and even to dad that they should nonchalantly drop their eyes and look down at their shoes as we walk past her. According to a source who spoke to people, the Nike code word is powerful enough that if Michelle utters it, it's always met with immediate action. The source claimed, They say it and all the boys look straight down to the floor every time. It's like an automatic military thing. Things like that blow my mind. They've been making headlines ever since they hit the air. But off-camera, there's been plenty of drama for the Duggar family. Who lied, who cheated, and who did the deed before marriage? They may be wholesome, but they're still human. Of the many public controversies the Duggar family has weathered over the years, one of the most talked about is the falling out between Jill and her parents, Jim Bob and Michelle. The trouble started in 2017, when Jill abruptly quit counting on. She later told People that she had learned that her dad was making up to $45,000 an episode. Meanwhile, she hadn't made a dime. In March of 2021, she and her husband, Derek, revealed on their YouTube channel that she hadn't seen her parents in years. But by her own account, Jill seems happy with a little distance between herself and her family, explaining that she and Derek have been busy raising their young kids. She told fans, We have to prioritize our like mental, emotional health and all of that. Since ditching her parents, Jill has been forging her own path. Unlike the strict religious rules she adhered to growing up, she has been known to drink alcohol from time to time. And she broke the family dress code by wearing pants. She even sent her oldest son, Israel, to public school. Who knows what she'll do next? While Jill reportedly departed the network after uncovering the pay gap between her contract and her dad's, it turns out the tension had already been brewing behind the scenes thanks to her husband, Derek. In 2017, Derek caused a stir after he fired off a series of transphobic tweets. And he took particular issue with TLC promoting trans teen Jazz Jennings' new show. He wrote, I pity Jazz for those who take advantage of him in order to promote their agenda, including the parents who allow these kinds of decisions to be made by a child. It's sad that people would use a juvenile this way. Again, nothing against him, just unfortunate what's on TV these days. In the end, all these things come together and really just make me Jazz. Derek was heavily criticized for misgendering Jazz and also accused of bullying the teen. But he doubled down and continued on the attack. TLC responded by quickly denouncing Derek's tweets in a statement on Twitter. The network also revealed that he had already exited Counting On and would not appear in future episodes. Even so, Derek insisted that he had not been fired, targeting Jazz on Twitter again in 2018. But Jazz didn't let him get her down. She told US Weekly she considered Derek, quote, irrelevant and suggested he was just tweeting for publicity. Her hit TLC series, I Am Jazz, was renewed for season 7 in 2021. Josh Duggar has been at the center of legal and social controversy for years. 
The first time viewers really took note of him was in 2015, when the news broke that he was active on Ashley Madison. For those who may be wondering, the site connects married people with singles or even other spouses looking to have affairs. According to Gawker, the site had been hacked and the names of users were released. And, of course, Josh was on the list. After the news broke, the Duggars shared a statement from Josh on their family website. It read, in part, as I am learning the hard way, we have the freedom to choose our actions, but we do not get to choose our consequences. I deeply regret all the hurt I have caused so many by being such a bad example. He was tossing me around like a rag doll. In 2016, Josh scored a win when adult film star Danica Dillon dropped her lawsuit accusing him of assaulting her, according to People. And through all of this, his wife Anna has stuck closely by his side. As recently as July 2021, when he was facing yet another round of allegations, a source told Fox News the couple was still committed to making it work. Just do the next right thing, have the next right response for the next 15 minutes. Jill and Derek have more than earned their reputation as the most rebellious of the Duggar couples. And one scandal we'll never forget involved their allegedly sketchy charity, Dillard Family Ministries. After dozens of allegations, the nonprofit was ultimately shut down in February 2018, according to Radar. The drama began three years earlier when the couple was accused of misusing charitable funds. They had asked fans for donations from $15 to $100 to support their missionary efforts, without offering specifics on what they would be doing. Eventually, they revealed that they were living in El Salvador, but they made multiple lengthy trips back to Arkansas. According to Entertainment Tonight, this convinced critics that they actually weren't doing any real charity work. That's a lot different than back home in Arkansas. In a 2017 post on the Duggar family website, the couple announced they were shutting down their ministry, but In Touch noted that Derek later launched another fundraiser to ask for $6,500 for vague North American missionary duties. He made $125 before the page was shut down. As of 2021, Jill and Derek haven't tried to elicit any more money from fans. In 2015, it was revealed that Jim, Bob, and Michelle had essentially stood in the way of their daughter Jill following her passion. Two years prior, Jill was training to become a midwife. She explained on the show, "...the training is hands-on apprenticeship style, so we are really getting in there and getting to experience what midwifery and doula roles look like hands-on." It's fun just to get my hands on her belly and um, listen to the baby's heartbeat. As part of the program, Jill was required to assist in births. And that's where the trouble began. Jill's sister-in-law, Susanna Keller, who is Anna Duggar's sister, had asked Jill to be present when she gave birth in 2013. But when Jim, Bob, and Michelle discovered Susanna was still single at the time, an insider alleged to Radar they thought Jill shouldn't be exposed to an unmarried mother in that condition. But the scenario isn't a total surprise. After all, Susanna was close with the rest of the family and even appeared on an episode of 17 Kids and Counting. But when she chose to explore a less religion-oriented life, a source told OK that the Duggars banned Susanna from appearing on their show. One of the weirdest Duggar family moments happened when they allegedly staged a fake food drive. During filming for 19 Kids and Counting in 2015, the family tweeted that they had organized a food drive that would take place at a community center in Springdale, Arkansas. But when the Duggars and producers realized that no needy people had actually shown up and that the crowd was, instead, just rabid fans of the show, production stepped in. A witness told Radar that they saw producers ask one family to pretend to need food for the cameras. The family was even given acting instructions and releases to sign. They were also filmed listening to Jim Bob talk about how he was often hungry as a child. The source also claimed that the Duggars even loaded food into the family's car. But once the cameras stopped rolling, they took it right back. While the Duggars haven't confirmed or denied anything, in a 2017 video for TLC, Josiah Duggar admitted that his family had done some acting on their show. Jed Duggar dipped his toe into the political arena during the 2020 election cycle, running as a Republican candidate in the Arkansas state representative race. With your prayer, support, and help, I look forward to serving you as a strong conservative voice in Little Rock. His political awakening was likely inspired by his dad, who was once an Arkansas state senator. But ultimately, Jed was defeated by incumbent Democrat Megan Godfrey in what the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette described as a historically red district. He may not have won, but Jed still made waves for his questionable campaign financing. 
A month before the election, The Sun broke the news that Jed had reportedly received $8,400 from a single donor for his campaign. That's roughly three times the amount any one donor is legally allowed to give to a political campaign in Arkansas. But perhaps the most embarrassing part was that the single donor was evidently more supportive of Jed's candidacy than his own family. Only a few of the Duggar clan gave the political hopeful any kind of donation, with Jim Bob chipping in just 300 bucks. When Austin Forsyth married into the Duggar family, he wasn't immediately welcomed by all. Soon after his wedding to Joy Anna, a source told Radar that some of the Duggars had reservations about the relationship, adding, he was immature, arrogant, and lacked experience. I was a fool not to have had my eyes open and, and looking at her. If the Duggars were indeed concerned that Austin was in way over his head when it came to big commitments, they may have been proven right when his allegedly shady business dealings made headlines in the news. These days, Austin makes his income from flipping houses, but he found himself in the midst of a renovation scandal in 2019. According to court docs obtained by The Sun, the owners of a $140,000 home, which they purchased from Austin, sued him for not properly permitting the septic system. When they moved in, they immediately noticed the smell of human sewage, and their dog reportedly got sick from sampling some water on the property. Austin maintained that he didn't need a permit for the job and would not be paying the $20,000 required for a new one. Both parties eventually settled outside of court. As fundamentalist Baptists, the Duggars expect their children to follow all kinds of rules, including abstaining from intimacy as well as certain types of physical contact before marriage. In the family's book, Growing Up Duggar, Ginger and her sisters compared premarital intimacy to playing in the street and getting hit by one of the many semi-trucks that drive past our house. They also cautioned young women to protect their purity. On the Behind the Scenes podcast, Ginger's husband, Jeremy Volo, opened up about the topic of purity from a married man's point of view. Explaining that he likes to keep Ginger informed about his various temptations, he said it helps keep those thoughts in check. He shared, Very early on, from the moment we were married, I wanted Ginger to be in with me in the battle for purity. It builds her trust, because she begins to think, if he's struggling, he's gonna let me know, and I can fight with him. So how exactly does Ginger help out with this task? Well, in addition to being a shoulder to lean on, the couple has an arrangement in which Jeremy, who is active on social media, doesn't keep the apps for Instagram or Twitter available on his phone. If he wants to post anything, he has to use his wife's phone, thereby limiting what he calls, quote, the temptation of the internet. If we've learned anything about the Duggar family, it's that intimacy before marriage is a serious no. That's why the rather rushed wedding between Joanna and Austin raised a few eyebrows. It was just like all these emotions going through me, like my whole life is changing. The 2017 ceremony was originally scheduled for October, according to The Knot, but was bumped up to May at the last minute. Of course, it's entirely possible that the couple were just desperate to get down the aisle and didn't want to waste more time and money planning the wedding. But given the fact that they announced they were expecting their first child a mere three months after the big day, skeptical fans thought it was because of a different reason. And some guessed they had to rush the wedding to keep people from finding out they didn't adhere to the Duggar family rule. So was there any truth to the rumors? As far as we can confirm, no. Austin's brother-in-law backed the newlyweds, explaining to Radar, I've heard those rumors, but they're not true. People are too nosy. Joyanna eventually put the rumors to rest for good by revealing that her due date was in February. As for Austin, he seemed relieved that the wedding date got moved up, regardless of the reason why. He said in a video for the network, I think the moment I said I do was just a huge burden off my shoulders. Finally being married to her was just a tremendous weight lifted off. Looks like those first kisses in front of hundreds of your closest friends and family are indeed pretty stressful. The cast of Counting On is moving on, and in the case of the Duggar and Dillard families, they may be moving apart. Here's what's happened to the Counting On clan since the series cancellation. Duggar viewers are well aware of the scandal that ended it all. In April 2021, the eldest Duggar child, 33-year-old Josh, was arrested on charges of receiving and possessing child sexual abuse material. He posted bond and was released, and has spent the intervening months hiding out at the rural Arkansas home of some close family friends. Why not at his own home? Because, according to the Daily Mail, a judge ordered him not to be in the presence of his six children without his wife, Anna, present, and not to be in the presence of any other children at all. Kind of an impossible order to follow when you live on Duggar grounds. In late September 2021, Josh was seen for the first time since his April arrest. 
people reported that he was photographed leaving court after a judge denied several motions filed by his legal team to suppress evidence as well as one motion to have the case dismissed entirely. Josh has pled not guilty to both charges leveled against him. He would face up to 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine for each count if convicted, for a possible sentence of 40 years. His trial is scheduled to begin in November 2021. While the charges leveled against Josh Duggar may be enough to break up most marriages, The Sun reported that Anna, his wife of over a decade, was standing by him. An unnamed inside source told the outlet that Anna had practically moved into the home of Josh's close family friends. Anna was allegedly struggling with Josh's arrest and placing blame on everyone, from parents Jim Bob and Michelle to the Biden administration, for the trouble he's in. Unsurprisingly, this finger-pointing has led to some tensions within the extended family. The son alleges that Anna has had a falling out with the Duggar parents and has essentially isolated herself from various members of the clan, refusing to speak to them. She reportedly believes that if they had handled his first molestation scandal better, he wouldn't be in trouble again. Again, a rep for the family declined to comment on whether or not the reports of family discord are true. Things haven't been all bad in the Duggar universe since their TV time was cut short. Beyond the courtroom, there's been plenty to celebrate, including the marriage of Jed Duggar and his new wife Katie. In April 2021, the couple surprised fans by walking down the aisle. According to Jed's Instagram post, they'd been quietly courting for about a year before taking the plunge. He wrote, Katie, the thought of sharing the rest of my life with you makes me the happiest man in the world. It seems Jim Bob and Michelle were on board with the union. Writing on the family Instagram, account, we are overjoyed about adding a new daughter in love to our family. This was the first Duggar wedding that was truly private. There seemingly wasn't a camera crew or a single member of the paparazzi present to document the day. This just goes to demonstrate how much has changed for the family since their headline dominating heyday. Weddings aren't the only way the Duggars are growing their already massive family. They're adding grandchildren, of course. Five months after they tied the knot, Jed and Katie Duggar announced they were expecting. Captioning their Instagram photo, she tested positive, but not for COVID. The couple seems to be over the moon about their quote, almost instantaneous conception, as they called it on YouTube. However, critics, including Katie Joy of Without a Crystal Ball, were less than thrilled about the way the couple shared the news, calling the COVID joke both tasteful and insensitive. Jed and Katie's baby, due in spring 2022, joins a host of other Duggar grandbabies, including Jessa and Ben Seawald's addition, a daughter named Fern. Born in July 2021, right after Counting On was canceled, Fern was an unexpected but happy surprise for the couple, who had suffered a pregnancy loss just months earlier. Eldest daughter-in-law Anna also announced she was pregnant with her seventh child, a little girl, in spring 2021. Not all baby news has been happy news in the Duggar family. In October 2021, Jill Dillard announced on her Instagram page that she'd suffered a miscarriage. In the one-minute video clip, Jill and her husband Derek emotionally await pregnancy test results and tell their two children, Israel and Samuel, that they'd be getting a little sibling. Then, they quickly find out that they were miscarrying. On their family blog, the Dillards shared more information, writing that they'd miscarried only a few days after the final video clip was filmed. The couple has been open in the past about the fact that they use birth control, which is a very undugger practice. We use birth control, but we prefer to use non-hormonal birth control methods, um, and just because we don't want to use anything that could potentially cause an abortion. In a 2020 YouTube Q&A about the topic, they told fans that they did want to have more kids someday. Here's to hoping more little Dillards arrive soon. Though news of Jill and Derek Dillard's split with the rest of the Duggar family broke years before Counting On was canceled in June 2021, it seems the breach hasn't been mended just yet. The details of the initial falling out have always been fuzzy, with the Dillards themselves never confirming exactly what led to the rift, only saying on their YouTube channel, "...we're not on the best terms with some of my family. We've had some disagreements and stuff, but we're working toward healing, definitely, and restoration." Judging by some comments from the couple, it seems that healing and restoration may not be going very well. 
They wrote on their family website, We first heard of the cancellation when both a friend and a cousin texted us after seeing TLC's statement online. We do not know how long the cancellation had been planned. The phrasing seems to suggest that communications between the Dillards and the larger family are so strained that the life-changing news was never shared behind closed doors. Fans might wonder if the Duggars and Dillards are even talking at all. Jana Duggar, the oldest daughter of Jim Bob and Michelle, turned 31 in 2021. Within the family's fundamentalist Christian community, she's inching increasingly closer to being considered a spinster, but she doesn't seem too bothered by her relationship status. There have been different guys come along and ask, but yeah, it's just not, they haven't been, you know, the right, I don't know, the right one. In fact, in many ways, she appears to be reveling in her singleness especially because her age seems to grant her some privileges that are usually reserved for married Duggar women, like wearing pants and going places without a chaperone in tow. Several of her Instagram photos show the brunette beauty wearing pants out and about in public, everywhere from football games to Las Vegas craft markets. This seemingly innocent apparel choice lies in sharp contrast to her parents' rule that women must wear skirts and dresses. It's a belief that stems from their interpretation of a Bible verse in Deuteronomy, which says, a woman shall not wear a man's garment. The pants are a huge contrast to the nearly three decades Jana spent wearing those more feminine items of clothing. Additionally, Jana may not be bound by the same chaperone rules as the other Duggar kids. She traveled to Chip and Joanna Gaines' Magnolia destination with her friend, Laura DeMaisie, and her brother, Jason Duggar. A commenter on Jason's Instagram post said it was quote, kind of sad that Jana wasn't allowed to go out and about without a chaperone. Jason set the record straight about his older sister by replying, in quotes, she can. In their same statement about counting on ending, Jill and Derek Dillard wrote, During our years on the show, we had many great experiences with the network, and several of the crew members have even become like family to us. However, we also faced many pressures and some unexpected challenges, which forced us to step away from the show in an effort to gain more control over our own lives and to do what was best for our family. Surprisingly, the Dillards aren't the only ones who seem happy to have stepped away from the series and the fame that comes with it. On a 2021 episode of the Dinner Party with Jeremy Fall podcast, Ginger Volo chatted more openly about the various ways the show negatively impacted her mental health. She said on the podcast that her time on TV often led to her worrying about other people's opinions of her, remarking that she wrestles often with the complications of fame. Ginger also discussed the difficulty of forming friendships in adulthood outside of her family. She emotionally explained, It's hard sometimes when people don't understand your life. It's something that I think is definitely overlooked when people think about fame. Though the star shared that she's grateful, it sounds like spending your entire childhood and adolescence in front of the camera isn't as perfect as we may have all imagined it to be. There are a number of things many of us do regularly, like watch movies, dance, or listen to secular music that are strict no-nos for the Duggar family. But other hobbies, like traveling the world, are perfectly acceptable. Travel lovers at heart, the Duggars have chronicled many of their vacations on their TLC shows. They've gone everywhere from Japan and Jerusalem to more easily accessible locations, including Washington, D.C. and New York City. And just because the cameras have stopped rolling, that doesn't mean the Duggars have stopped embarking on these adventures. In fact, they took an RV trip out west and documented the entire thing on the family Instagram account. The Dillards have been on the move as well, taking a road trip from their native Arkansas to Oregon, following the Oregon Trail for parts of their journey. They of course took fans along for the ride on their YouTube channel, posting a series of short videos sharing the highlights. According to The Sun, the Duggars were making about $850,000 a year from counting on. So when the series ended and the paycheck stopped coming, they might have felt a financial blow. How have they been making money since, you may ask? It turns out there are a number of ways. In Touch Weekly reported that Jim Bob's commercial rental business brings in a good amount of money for the core family. Many of his sons work for him, but John David works as a pilot, Joseph as a real estate agent, and son-in-law Ben Sewald as a handyman. 
Joanna and her husband, Austin, bring money in flipping houses. Ginger and Jeremy host a podcast called The Hope We Hold, and Jeremy also works as a pastor. Many of the women of the family also frequently post sponsored content on Instagram, which, given their existing fame, must come at a pretty decent fee. However, it seems that many members of the family relied on those counting on checks as their primary source of income. So, we may see a lot more family members trying out more traditional careers in the near future. While TLC might be done with the Duggar family, the Washington Post pointed out that the world might not be. The Duggars certainly have a large fan base. Even towards the end, the show was topping 1 million viewers for an episode, and many of the family's individual members maintain large social media presences. This popularity indicates that regardless of scandals and drama, the family remains commercially viable. So it's possible that we may find them in some form back on our screens in the future, even if it's only on our computer screens while more of the siblings put out content on YouTube. Tom Noonan, a professor and former network executive, told The Post, Typically, these things, like decisions about who to put on TV, come down to the executive suites at networks and down to advertising and sales departments. Maybe that means that as long as there's money to be made off of the family, there's always a chance they could make a comeback somehow. Reality TV didn't keep the Duggars from their beliefs and lifestyle. While some members of the family came to hold convictions later on, their upbringing as a unified mega-family was ratings gold for TLC. Let's examine the strict rules the Duggar family had to follow. The Duggars, led by parents Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar, have been characterized as independent Christian Baptists, a notably conservative branch of Protestantism. The family's rules, which can seem strict to outside audiences, might make more sense when seen through the family's religious framework. A big rule the Duggar children are expected to follow is an abstinence-only policy before marriage, so any form of physical intimacy is prohibited until a couple says their vows. An in-law of the Duggar family spoke up about the group's stance on intimacy before marriage in the funniest way. Derek Dillard, who married Jill Duggar, had a little fun with fans on Instagram after Jill congratulated her younger brother, Justin Duggar, on his engagement to his fiancée, Claire. A fan commented, "'Amazingly surprised that your brother is 17 and engaged. Why do you guys rush to marry in life? He's a kid and Claire, too.'" Not mincing words, Derek replied, "'Because we want to have sex.'" His wife obviously enjoyed the statement, because her response was a smiley face emoji with its tongue sticking out, followed by the A-OK -okay emoji. The Duggars' requirement of no sex before marriage seems to function as an umbrella for several other rules. It's not just sex that can wait for marriage when you're a Duggar. The family's courtship system prohibits most other forms of physical contact before marriage. Interestingly, the Duggar children get a little more leeway with this rule. Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar told Today that they let their kids decide what physical boundaries will look like. However, each couple must tell the Duggar parents what those boundaries are. In a 19 Kids and Counting clip, Jessa Duggar said of her physical relationship with Ben Seewald, "...basically, all we would do is just brief side hug when we're greeting or saying goodbye to each other, and really trying to focus on communication." Jim Bob countered to Today, saying, "...but they have committed to waiting for the first kiss till marriage." He added that Ben and Jessa were going to hold hands once they were engaged. Michelle added her thoughts about premarital PDA. We believe it's best for them to save the physical part for marriage. That way, there's no regrets. We did not save our first kiss for our wedding day, and we really regret that we didn't. For an adolescent Duggar, any romantic pursuit is geared toward a deeper commitment. So parents Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar don't believe in dating relationships that don't factor in the possibility of marriage. They spoke with Today in 2014 about this family rule. Jim Bob said, "...courtship is really waiting for the one God has for you and praying through the whole process." Michelle chimed in, saying, "...it's really examining the person and considering would this be the guy I want to be the father of my kids? If the courtship ends, it simply means that the couple discerned they weren't compatible for marriage." If it succeeds, then there's a wedding. There is no failed courtship. So what exactly can they do within courting? Joy Forsyth and Austin Forsyth spoke with TLC about their relationship prior to marriage. They said, "...it's really fun getting to spend time with her on different occasions and getting to do different activities and church-related stuff. We've gone on several road trips." 
Joy added that many of their activities were outdoors. Ben Sewald, in a Counting On clip, said the goal is to focus on getting to know each other as a person, asking lots of questions, having a lot of conversations. You could say it's a cerebral process, but that's not the last rule around courtship. While the Duggar children explore the possibilities of marriage with their significant others, the actual experience of going on a date doesn't just happen between a couple. A chaperone is always present. Jim Bob said in a 19 Kids and Counting clip, "...a lot of times, if you're alone with the person, that can create desires that can kind of get stirred up, and you don't have any accountability. It can kind of lead to some hanky-panky." Yep, hanky-panky. Conveniently, with a family as large as the Duggars, there tends to be a sibling or two available. James and Jackson Duggar accompanied their brother Joseph on a roller skating outing with Joe's eventual wife, Kendra Caldwell. James didn't hide his chaperoning prowess during the Counting On episode. He explained, "...I used to chaperone Jill and Derek, now I'm starting to chaperone Joe and Kendra. I've been doing it for a little while, not too long. I guess you could say I'm a pro chaperone." Young Jackson Duggar was a chaperone in training. The Duggar family has regulations around clothing specifically when it comes to what the daughters wear. Viewers will already be familiar with the dress code implemented by Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar for the whole family. The girls wore long dresses or skirts paired with high-cut shirts with sleeves. I think my children really have um, developed their understanding about certain parts of your person that probably should be covered. In their 2014 memoir, Growing Up Duggar, authors Jill, Ginger, Jessa, and Jana Duggar explained the mindset behind their family's dress code. They wrote, "...it's okay to enhance or accent whatever beauty God has given us, but we try to be careful not to wear clothes that are too tight and draw attention to the wrong places. But this does not mean we go out dressing frumpy or trying to look formless. Clothing can be cute, trendy, and stylish, and still entirely modest." In honor of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar's 34th wedding anniversary, Michelle wrote a blog post summarizing the outlook the couple shares that has kept their marriage alive. In the post, she outlined the seven basic needs of a husband, which were, "...a man needs a wife who is loyal and supportive, honors his leadership, develops inward and outward beauty, makes appeals, not demands, understands his need for time alone with God, who is grateful and will be praised by others." There were also the seven basic needs of a wife, which stipulated that a wife needed spiritual leadership from her husband, who protects, honors, and cherishes her, who communicates with her and invests in her life. Last but not least, a husband lets the wife know that she is meeting her husband's vital needs. This topic came up again when Jim Bob and Michelle spoke with Today, and the first rule was, say yes to sex, even when you're tired. Michelle reiterated advice she got from a friend prior to her wedding. In your marriage, there will be times you're going to be very exhausted. Your hubby comes home after a hard day's work, you get the baby to bed, and he is going to be looking forward to that time with you. Be available. Anyone can fix him lunch, but only one person can meet that physical need of love that he has, and you always need to be available when he calls. The Duggar family is famous for restricting the media and TV content their children consume, which might seem contradictory since they were on TV. The family's decision to limit television access started when Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar first got married. Jim Bob explained how it happened to Huff Post in 2011, saying, "...I grew up watching TV, but when we got married, a doctor friend of ours encouraged us not to have a pet or a TV the first year of marriage. So we did that. For the first year, we lived on love." When they were gifted with a TV, Jim Bob and Michelle spent all their time watching it instead of talking to one another. They found the content inappropriate and decided the whole thing was detrimental to their marriage. Jim Bob added, "...we prayed about it and felt we had to pull it out of our house, which we did. And I would say that is one of the best things we have done for our family." When more of the kids were at home and the family was growing up, they did actually have a television set, but they only used it to watch Duggar-appropriate DVDs, including The Andy Griffith Show. In a Q&A on 19 Kids and Counting, Jim Bob elaborated on their lack of interest in watching TV. He said, "...I tell you what, there is non-stop entertainment around here. It's like a 19-ring circus. There's never a dull moment around here." This one might be super obvious, considering the Duggars boast a brood of 19 kids, but Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar follow a lifestyle that does not include birth control. In their 2008 memoir, The Duggars, 20 and Counting, Raising One of America's Largest Families, Jim Bob and Michelle wrote about why they made this choice. They had initially used the pill after Josh was born. However, Michelle miscarried during this time. The parents wrote, 
As conservative Christians, we believe every life is sacred, even the life of the unborn. We prayed and studied the Bible and found a host of references that told us God considered children a gift, a blessing, and a reward. Yet we had considered having another child an inconvenience during that busy time in our lives, and we had taken steps to prevent it from happening. While there are varying opinions and perspectives on whether the Bible permits birth control or other contraceptives, the Duggars are firm in their convictions. Michelle even joked in her memoir that she's used to being asked about her stance on the subject, so it's clearly not a TMI issue for the family. The Duggar family has always been open about their rules and why they choose to live by them. This is certainly necessary for the world of reality TV and for a family that has published several books about their lives. Another rule that they've publicly talked about is that the Duggar household is alcohol-free. Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar don't drink, and they raise their kids to abstain from alcohol, too. In Growing Up Duggar, daughters Jill, Ginger, Jessa, and Jaina Duggar shed some light on their parents' teaching. Jim Bob told his children a story about a young man who grew up going to church, but in high school he was introduced to alcohol and eventually became a drug addict. They said, How sad that one seemingly small decision started him on a path of self-destruction. Have the Duggar House alcohol rules influenced any of the adult children? Maybe, maybe not. Jill and Derek Dillard addressed their stance on alcohol in a 2020 YouTube video. Derek shared their biblical belief that drunkenness is absolutely sinful. He then quipped, But that doesn't mean that, you know, Jill wouldn't have a pina colada <laughs> at dinner or something. The couple indicated that they drank responsibly, highlighting the importance of boundaries and transparency. Jill also said she wants their kids to see a healthy balance in her and Derek's lives. With an upbringing in such a strict, conservative, Christian household, many wonder what the Duggar children have done with the rules passed on to them from their parents. A number of Duggar children are married now with children of their own, but there seems to be a trend of forging their own paths with the same frank candidness that their parents had. For example, in 2020, Jill Duggar and husband Derek Dillard shared in a Q&A on YouTube that they decided to use birth control after baby number two. Jill explained, We use birth control, but we prefer to use non-hormonal birth control methods. Many of the adult daughters have been spotted wearing pants or even shorts, so they've clearly made their own decisions about the Duggar dress code. But perhaps the most open of all the Duggar kids is Ginger, who graciously and respectfully wrote about the decisions she made as an adult in light of her upbringing. In her memoir, The Hope We Hold, Ginger explained how the decision to wear pants ended up leading to a very deep experience of making her own decisions about everything. She said, I struggled with believing something that was different from my family. I knew they deeply cared about their convictions and I didn't want to hurt them. In the end, though, I had to walk in truth. Sounds like a powerful message.